So I didn't choose science fiction. I was writing a story um, and the story is about a girl in the future. And because the story is about a girl in the future, um, it became a science fiction film. I didn't even know it was a science fiction film. It was later on when I was just about to start shooting and I was talking to my producer and he said, you know, this genre is science fiction, right? And he asked me to make a choice because there were some elements of fantasy in the, in the original draft of the script. So he said, you have to decide whether or not you want to go more science fiction or <clears throat> more fantasy. So I made a decision at that point to go more science fiction than fantasy. But it wasn't an active choice that I'm going to make a science fiction film to deal with issues. I was just writing a story about something that I felt strongly about. Um, and I wasn't, I, I didn't know that it would be interpreted as anything else other than just a story that I was writing. I think there's more people writing science fiction now, yes. Um, I think that has to do with, our, um, one, the ability to create. It's easier to create than it was before. Um, to that we're more exposed as a continent to whatever different things that are happening. So our imagination has grown leaps and bounds to be able to accommodate the ideas of different genres into the work that we're doing, right? But I challenge that question that we've just started. I don't think we've just started. I think that science fiction has been a genre in Africa that has been used a lot for a long period of time, way before I was even born. And if we think about science fiction as the use of <clears throat> um, science or something that is fictitiously science or speculative fiction within a story, then we've always used it because we've used botany, we've used uh, entomology, the idea of the study of animals to tell stories, or the idea of insects to tell stories, or the idea of natural sciences and using trees, and that's all science fiction. Maybe it wasn't as widely spread before because there wasn't the internet or there wasn't the access to festivals or whatever, or oral storytellers told their stories to villages and, nev and it never got past that. And then stories would be repeated down but never went to a wider audience. I think the difference now is that people are, have more access to Africa and are better able to hear more stories coming out of Africa. I don't think that the stories are new. I don't think that science fiction is a new genre, just like I don't think fantasy is a new genre in Africa. It's always existed. It's how we've told stories to our children. It's how we've communicated morality and tradition and a code of conduct and how to behave and how to be part of your society. The use of futurism and the use of speculative fiction is, it, it may seem like it's, it's becoming a trend, but I still, I'm curious about that because I think in every culture that I've heard of, there've always been people in all parts of Africa that have either looked to space or have, have, have had people who are seers, who could see into the future and who could disseminate the future and tell people what is going to happen. So I've always been able to draw from things that are outside of this world to be able to make sense of what's inside of the world. So I still think that, I think mean, there are, there is a trend Definitely, there is an Afrofuturist trend. Um, but some of that Afrofuturist trend backdates itself. So the idea that now, since Afrofuturism was coined in, say, the late 90s or early 2000s, now it's going back and looking at other people's work, like George Clinton, and saying George Clinton was an Afrofuturist uh, musician, and saying, well, Sun Ra was an Afrofuturist musician and saying pieces of John Coltrane's work was Afrofuturist. So not only is it becoming a trend, but I think it's involving work that was that existed before the term was coined and including it in it. So it has a lot 
it's a lot broader than it would originally be if it hadn't drawn from the past. But I, I do agree with you that there is a trend of Afrofuturist work coming out. And I worry about trends. I worry about if people are making that because they want to be part of the popular trend, or if that's really their way of being able to tell a story. Um, I think we should be conscious creators, especially, and I, and, and I do mean, especially people of African descent or of people from an African diaspora, or people who are on the continent, or who live outside of the continent, we should be very clear about the images that we're putting out of ourselves. Because black people in general have had a very slanted image for a long time. We've always been portrayed as violent. We've always been portrayed as victims. Um, women have been portrayed either as mothers or as prostitutes. Um, there's been a very strong emphasis on what the other sees us as. And I think that for that reason, and because we have children that we're bearing, and because there are people already here now who exist, my daughter exists now, that we are telling stories too. We need to be very clear about the messages that we're putting out. Very clear about the messages we're putting out. Because especially coming from Africa, where all the images that have come out have been about starvation or children with flies in their eyes or war or destruction or poverty or hunger or famine or there have been so many negative images coming out of Africa that if we don't actively combat those images, we're doing ourselves a disservice and not only for ourselves but for future generations. And for that reason, we have to be very careful about being part of a trend for the sake of being part of a trend or being part of a trend that is actually saying something. If your story is saying something, continue with that story. And I'm not saying that there's no reason to be frivolous. There's every reason to have pop culture and we do have a pop culture. And there's every reason to be, um, to be naive. But you have to know that in everything that you make, you're making a statement that people will perceive of it as a black person, unfortunately. We don't have the luxury of saying things and people not perceiving it as a black person or from a place that you are. We don't have that luxury. If I was European, I wouldn't be specifically targeted. I wouldn't, they wouldn't specifically target the place that I am to be able to define what kind of work I'm doing. But that's different for us, especially as people of African descent. People will target it and they'll label it and they'll put it in a little box and say, well, that's black art or that's African art or that's very specific. My work is being called Afrofuturist. It's not being called science fiction. It's being called Afrofuturist to put it in a box where it's understandable to people that it, it comes from a black person or it comes from an African person or person of African descent. I think the use of technology in the, is different. I think that we're already adapting technology and, and we have really inno innovative ways of using technology now. And that's more interesting to me. I think that um, if there's more space for the uses of technology and the way that we're reusing technology to be um, given a voice and to be pushed to the forefront and to be made a trend, then I think that, would, that is more likely to uh, encourage more people to study science. And there's a lot of things that are happening. Um, there's, there's many gadgets that are being made by different parts of Africa that are in response to their immediate needs. Um, and technology is being used in the most astounding, mind-opening ways. And that's really very exciting for me to see. I went to the Maker Fair in Nairobi and I was completely stunned by the things that people were doing. And there was this gadget that people did on a phone. They were able to use their mobile phone to turn on their kettle, to turn on the hot water in their house, to turn on the security system. And these were all creations that were coming out of Nairobi. I think there should be a trend, a Maker Fair trend. <laughs> 
<laughs> that encourages more people to use science to solve their everyday problems.